G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Now we are going to be focusing on information management across SharePoint in this video and in particular, the concept of content types and content type hierarchy and how that can play an important role in your information management strategy. Now in particular, we're gonna be focusing on document sets. One of my favorites, uh, I call them folders on steroids. So we're going to have a look at how we set these up in a parent-child relationship and the advantage of doing that. So enough talking, we're just gonna dive in and have a look. Now there's two different areas where we can create our content types. We've got a content type gallery at the global level of your tenant. Now this is in the SharePoint Admin Center, so you do need to have the correct permissions to be able to create them in here. But we do also have the ability to create these at the site collection level as well. So it's scoped just to that particular site collection. So if we're in the Admin Center and we're creating our content types, we can publish them out to the entire uh, organization. So all our sites can consume these content types. But if we're talking specifically at a site, then or a site collection, then it's only be able to be consumed by that particular site collection. So in this uh, example, we're gonna be creating them at the tenant level, so in the SharePoint Admin Center. So the first thing we need to do is actually create our base content type. Now, uh, in this scenario, we're going to be using a project as the source or the, the base content type. And we're going to be using a document set uh, as our parent, as our content type, okay? So what we're going to do is from the create content type menu, the parent category, and this is where the hierarchy uh, begins. Everything in SharePoint is or every item is based on a, a, an out of the box base content type. Now in particular, we are going to start with the out of the box document set content types and we're going to use the content type of document set as our parent. Now we are going to say, um, give our custom uh, document set content type a name. So we're going to go Copilot Studio Project and that will be the global project, a nice standardized, consistent way to store all of our project related documentation inside of a document set. And we're going to give that some metadata. So that is our base content type. Now we're going to create a new category and we're gonna call this uh, Copilot Studio. So we're gonna group all of our custom content types that relate to this organization inside of this category. So there's our starting point, all right? So we'll create our content type here. Now, that's just inheriting all the, all the columns from that out of the box document set content type. You can see we've got three. We've got title, we've got name, and we've got description. And this is where we build on top of these columns and create our own. So I'm going to add a, or create a new site column. I'm going to say project start date because projects, we wanna capture that piece of metadata. I'm going to uh, create a new category and I'm gonna call this Copilot Studio. Now we're remembering what we're doing here is creating a new category for our columns, not our content type, but our columns. Now I'm going to choose uh, a date and time for our start date and we will save. So that has now added a project start date. Now we're going to also create a new column called project completion date because we wanna record when that um, project was completed. So same thing, except this time, I'm going to use the category that I've already created. I'm still gonna choose a date and time and I will click save. So now we've got two custom site columns associated to this content type. Let's keep building on this. I want to say project manager is another uh, piece of metadata that we're going to use and I'm gonna choose a personal group. I will show profile pictures and we'll hit save. The other thing we're going to do is have a project status. So we'll go project uh, status. Uh, we'll use the same and then what we're going to do here is we'll choose a choice column and we'll go um, new uh, in progress, uh, in progress and completed. 
and actually we'll change this to not started. So we'll go not started in project, uh, in progress and complete it and we'll hit save. So now we've got the basis of our project. So now when we start a new project, we're going to be able to fill out these fields and manage, uh, and manage our project uh, with that metadata. So now that we've got that in place, we're going to publish this content type. So we're going to, remembering that we're using the content type uh, gallery here in the SharePoint Admin Center. So we want to publish this out so that all of our sites can then consume uh, this content type if we need to. Because there are probably a number of uh, different functions or areas of your business that uh, do run projects and we want to have a standardized approach. So think about uh, when we want to search or find projects across an organization. We can now, now that we're using a content type, we can create a search experience uh, that pulls back all of our projects regardless of where that project document set is and, and what site collection that is in. So now that that has been published, what we can do is jump into any site collection now and I'm gonna just jump into this SharePoint Fundamental site collection. It's a team site. I'm gonna create a new document library and I'm going to call this projects. So each area of the business might have their own projects document library where they run their projects off, out of, but we wanna use that document set, uh, that content type and that document set. So I'm going to use the add a column. Now down the bottom of add a column, we've got add a content type and I'm gonna click next. And this is where we can choose our content types that we want to associate or add to this document library. So in our dropdown, we can see that we've got a couple of different ones here. Now, what you will notice though, is that we don't have that project document set uh, uh, available for us to choose from. Now that is because this is a, a document set. Now the document set feature actually isn't enabled by default in our site collection. So the first thing we need to do to be able to consume this custom content type is actually enable the document set site collection feature. So under site collection administration, we'll have this site collection features uh, section here. Now you'll see this document sets uh, feature, we need to activate that. Now, as soon as we activate that, that is going to make that content type available to us. So I'll jump back to our document, our projects library, and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing and I'll go add a content type, I'll click next, and then from the available content types now, I've got that project uh, document set available to me. So I'm going to apply that now. And now that it's adding the content type, you can see that it's adding in the top right hand corner here, that is going to be available from the new menu or the new button. So we can see, I can go new Copilot Studio project, and that is going to fire up a, a form that I can fill out. And there is our metadata that we set up previously in the, in the content type gallery, and now that is available to us. Okay, so let's go uh, and we'll, cre uh, we'll create a document set. We've got our description, we've got a project start date. Now we don't have an end uh, completion date yet, obviously, we're gonna start this on Monday. Project manager can be uh, Alex, and the project status is uh, not started yet. So we'll hit save. That's going to add that document set to our library, uh, and we can see that we've got that there. Now we might wanna add our, our uh, columns uh, that we've got. So we might have start date, completion date, manager, status, we'll just hit apply. That will then give us the columns that we've got added to our, uh, our content type. So that's the basis of creating a custom document set content type in the content type gallery. All right. So now that we've created that in that, at that level, any library across your organization across any site collection that has the document set features, um, site collection feature enabled can now consume that content type. A nice standardized approach to be able to manage our projects at any function or, or any site across your company. What about now if projects differ from different functions or different areas across your business? So let's take maybe a communications, um, the function of your of your business. They might be running projects across different platforms, for example. So it might be LinkedIn or uh, Facebook or Twitter or those type of things. So their projects relate to, to platforms. 
Now we could add a category at that project level that we've just that we've just created. So at this content type, the Copilot Studio project. Now we might have uh, we we could add that column there, but that column doesn't relate to every other uh, part of the business. All right. So what we want to try and do is have a custom uh, project that the communications team can use that is specific to them. This is where the, this concept of content type hierarchy comes into play and is really, really powerful. We still want all of these uh, base columns here, but we don't really want to have to recreate these. So what we can do here is in the content type gallery again, I'm going to create a new content type and I'm going to say uh, communications project, all right, as our uh, as a name of our content type. I'm gonna use an existing category and we're going to use uh, Copilot Studio. Now the pair, this is where the parent content type comes into play. So you can see that I've got chosen here. Parent category is Copilot Studio. So I'm choosing a content type out of that category. And I've got this one content type here called the Copilot Studio project, which is the one we've just created before. Now I'm gonna create this communications project based on this parent. So I'm gonna click click create. Now what you're gonna see happen here is that we're going to automatically start with those columns that we created at the parent level. Now we can branch off and create our custom columns for the communications team. So I can say now create a new site column and I'm gonna call this one platform. And I'm going to use the, the same category here for our site columns. But this time I'm gonna choose a choice and I'm going to add some choices. So I'm going to say LinkedIn, I'm going to say Facebook, uh, Facebook, I'm going to say uh, Twitter or X and we might say uh, internal slash SharePoint, okay? And I will hit save. So now what we've got is a branched or a child content type for our projects. We've still got the same metadata as the parent project, but now we've just added this platform as an additional piece of metadata just for the comms team. So now when you're in, the, in your communications um, site collection, what you can do, and we'll just simulate this and I'll just create, uh, we'll use the same site collection. I'll just you create a new, um, library here, and we'll call this one communications projects. But what we wanna do is we wanna add that communications project content type to this library. So we're going to go add a column, we'll scroll down. Now we've already enabled the site, the document sets uh, feature in the site collection. So we'll go add a content type, we'll click next. Actually, what we haven't done is we haven't published this, so it's not gonna be available. So let's publish this first. So we'll hit save. That's now being published, so it can be, can be consumed by uh, site collections and libraries. I'm just gonna cancel this. I'll give this a bit of a refresh. We'll do the same thing. So we'll scroll down, we'll go add a content type, we'll click next, and then from our available content types, we've now got our communications project. We'll hit apply, and now that's adding the content type to the library, and it's going to be available from the new button here. So we'll go new, communications project and you'll see similar experience, but now we've got this platform. So you can see I've got LinkedIn uh, and we can then, let's go and give this a name. So we might go co-pilot uh, workshops. Just, uh, we might be creating a, a bit of a project around these workshops. We'll go project manager, it can be Adele. Uh, we're going to start this, it's not started yet, we're going to start it on the 29th and it's for LinkedIn and we'll hit save. So now that's going to add that to that particular uh, library called communications project. Same thing, we might go uh, and show and hide columns. We might want to go, well, I wanna show all of these and we're good to go. We've got no, not started. We might move a few of these around and we want the platform to be up here as well. And we'll scroll across. And there we've got our uh, communications project. 
that's based on that out of the box project content type that we then uh, that we set up at the at the uh, at the base level. So there we go. The concept of content types and content type hierarchy, specifically around document sets. And you can see how we can create and, and good practices to create a, a base content type for a particular thing. And then what you can do is, is branch off and create your child content types underneath that, causing or creating that inheritance from the parent itself as well. So I hope that brings you some value today. Really important to understand fundamentals there around your for your information management and uh, good information architecture. So I hope that brings you some value. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session.